All right, guys, so this is going to be uh, dividing for polynomials, so it's a little bit more complicated than it would be just to multiply or add or subtract. Um, there's actually two methods that we can use, and uh, just for reference, the, the problem in this would have been written as, like, um, taking this large polynomial and then dividing it by p minus 6, okay? And one way to do division, just like back in the day, um, I don't know whatever grade you do this in, but using a method of long division. Okay, so I'm going to show long division first, and then there's a little quicker method that works on certain problems, and this is one of those that it will work on. Um, but I always like to show long division first because it always works. Okay, so basically with long division, what you're going to do, um, if we remember, let me just put a little on the side here um, with, with numbers. Let's say we were doing like 6 into 300 and... 27 or something. I'm just making this up. So what you do, you always check, you see how many times does 6 go into 3, and it doesn't. How about 6 into 32, right? 6 goes into 32 5 times, and then what we would do is do um, 5 times the 6 would be 30, right? And then we would subtract. So the 32 minus 30, of course, is 2, and you bring down that 7, and then you're saying now how many times does 6 go into 27? 6 goes into 27 four times, and then we would multiply four times 6 to be 24, and when we subtract these, we get our remainder, and we would say like something like remainder of 3, but technically what happens is it's the, the actual numerical value would be that 3 over the 6, okay? So we would, we would actually write this as 54, 3 sixths is the same as 1 half. So that would be how you would do long division just using numbers. Okay, as a review. Okay, so with polynomials, it's the exact same thing. It just kind of feels different. But what we're doing is we're looking at how many times does that p go into p cubed? Okay, so p goes into p cubed p squared times, right? Because p times p squared is p cubed. Um, and then we do the same thing we did with the numerical um, example. We're going to multiply p squared times the p minus 6 out here. So it's going to become p cubed minus 6p squared. Okay, what I'm doing there again, just to see, I'm, I'm taking the p squared, multiplying it by the p minus 6. Just like we did here, when we got the 5 right here, we multiplied it by 6 to get 30, right? The exact same process. Okay, again, it just feels different, but it's really the same thing. And then we're gonna subtract. Okay, so p cubed minus p cubed is zero. Um, be careful here now on the second one, it's 2p squared, but we're, we're subtracting negative 6p. So when you subtract negative, we're really adding. So 8p squared, and we will bring down the next term, which is minus 47p. Okay, now what I'm going to do is see how many times does, does this same p here go into 8p squareds. So p into 8p squareds should go 8p times. It's positive 8p times. So I'm now going to multiply the 8p times the p minus 6 out here. And I'll get 8p squared minus 48p. Okay, and again, we're going to subtract this down again. Okay, we have uh, 8p squared minus 8p squared is 0. Um, negative 47p take away negative 48p. Since we're subtracting a negative again, it's going to be like adding. So it's just going to be 1p. And then there's a minus 8 still. And one more time, I'm going to see how many times does this P go into P. P goes into P one time. We'll multiply the 1 times the P minus 6. Okay, and we're going to subtract here one last time. So P minus P is 0. The negative 8 take away negative 6 should become negative 2. And that's going to be our remainder. Okay, and the way we write it is just like over here, we put it over the divisor. So we're going to have a minus, and it's going to be 2 over the p minus 6. Okay, and that's going to be our answer to the long division problem. Okay, and since we did get a remainder, um, and the, since the remainder was negative, that's why I put the minus right there. Otherwise, I would have put a plus. Okay, um, and what we're going to use this for later is since this thing had a remainder, we know that p minus 6 did not go in evenly into the p cubed plus 2p squared. Uh, minus 47p minus 8. In other words, it's telling us it's not a factor. Okay, just like similarly over here when we did that division problem, since we got that fractional answer and we got a remainder down here, I know that 6 was not a factor of 327. Okay, and we're going to use that quite a bit in uh, when we start solving polynomials.
Okay, so let's look at the other method. Um, I'm gonna encourage you guys just to use the method I'm about to do. Um, you'll see synthetic division is much easier. Um, this one, once once you get it down, it's not too bad, but sometimes with the subtracting and, and just kind of having variables thrown all over the place, it's a little more confusing. But let me show you the same exact problem using synthetic division, and that's the method we're gonna kind of stick with for the most part when possible. We will see it is the exact same, right? P squared plus eight P plus one. Okay, so here's the exact same problem. Um, again, we showed how to do with the long division method. Um, synthetic division is a method um, that will work when the thing you're dividing by is a linear binomial. Okay, so it's like a um, linear means it is just a variable to the first power. Um, and then the binomial, of course, means it has two terms, so p minus 6. Um, and we also needed to have a coefficient, a leading coefficient, kind of like where the slope would be. Um, of 1. Okay, so if it's not that case, then you would have to use the long division method on the previous problem. Um, at this point, I'm just going to stick to this method and we'll get into the other type of problems later. Okay, but here's what we do. Um, what we're going to do, since we're dividing by p minus 6, we're going to actually, since it's synthetic division, it's kind of like a made up method or process, we're going to kind of do things backwards from long division. So that's going to start out by, instead of using um, p minus 6, I'm actually going to use positive 6 as like a special number for this problem. Okay, so I'm going to have positive 6, and that's going to go in the box because we're going to do some calculations with that in just a second. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the coefficients from the divisor here, or the dividend, and um, we are going to um, use those numbers to, to get the process going. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to list those coefficients in order. So starting with the, the p to the third power, and you need to make sure that it doesn't skip any. It's going down to the second, down to p to the first, and then this last term is a constant with no p. It would be like p to the zero. And we're going to list those coefficients in order. So it was 1 for the p cubed, 2 for the p squared, negative 47 for the p, and then a constant of negative 8. And here's this process. Again, it's going to seem weird. It's like we're not really doing a division problem, but it's going to answer the question for us. So what we do, and you do this same process every time, you bring the first term down, so the 1 comes down, and then you're going to end up multiplying the 1, and we're going to multiply by that 6 there to get 6. Okay, and that goes in that spot. And then we're going to add these two numbers. 2 plus 6 is 8. And we're just going to repeat that process again. I'm going to take 8 times the 6 right here now to get 48. Okay, we're going to add those two numbers. Negative 47 um, plus 48 is 1. And one more time, I'm going to do 1 times the 6 to get 6. Add these two numbers. Negative 8 plus 6 is going to be um, negative 2. And that last number there is going to be our remainder. Okay, it's just the way this works. And the cool thing is the other numbers that we got... The, uh, the 1, the 8, and the 1, those are going to be the coefficients of our answer. Okay, and the, the trick is, or the thing to remember, we started out with a third degree polynomial, and since we divided by a first degree, our answer will then be a second degree, right? Because we started with a third and we kind of divided one away. So the coefficients of our answer are going to be here. It's going to be 1 for the p squared, plus 8 for the p, plus 1, and then our remainder goes over the p minus 6. Okay, and if we compare that to the answer we got when we did long division, p squared plus 8p plus 1 minus 2 over p minus 6. And that is synthetic division.